What is poppin' YouTube? <laughs> Sorry, what's up YouTube? This is your least favorite YouTuber, General Moscow. And today I'm coming at you with the... Uh, um... I need the gun. Oh. Today I'm coming at you with a special video, because this is the first video I've done on a gun like this. I introduce to you the Mac... The, the M 1917 American machine gun. This thing is a product of my favorite man of all time because he has a sexy mustache. I swear there's more reason than just that. Just let me think of it. Russ? That's Fik? Oh, that's why. Sorry, I'm being stupid. I forgot how to put it into the mouth. So, this is the M1917 Browning, water-cooled American heavy machine gun of World War I. In fact, a variant of this is still in use today, which is the M1919. So, if you're ready to hear about some history, let's get into this video. Eh. Okay, caliber, 30-06 Springfield, designed by John Moses Browning. He is my senpai. He is my Oni-chan. He is my, um, something else. Okay, the length of this piece is actually 39 inches in total, 3 feet and 3 inches, for those of you who can't do basic math. The barrel length is 2 feet, or 24 inches. So this thing has a good barrel length, and is fitted to a very lovely tripod configuration. This is how it was mainly deployed, because in 1900, John Moses Browning <coughs> filed a patent on a recoil-operated automatic gun. It was not until 1910, however, when he changed the design, where he actually ha gave it a bottom ejection system, a buffer for smoother operation, and the hammer was replaced with a two-piece firing pin. However, all that did little to the outer appearance of the gun, visibly being unchanged from the 1900 model. That's just how effing sexy this gun is. Like, look at this thing. This thing is orgasmic. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, I'm a little bit festive right now. I got a pumpkin. Ugh. Unlike most other machine guns of the time, though, this thing was not just a copy of the effing Maxim gun. That's right. A World War I machine gun that's not just the Maxim reskinned. Oh my gosh! How shocking! None of those exist back then, and it pisses me off. Literally, the British Vickers, before anyone says about it, is literally a licensed production of the Maxim. And the MG-08 is the same story for the Germans. Don't even get me a start on the Austria-Hungarian one. I'll do a video on that in the future. No, I won't. I'll do one on the Maxim gun and all of its variants. Ugh. Anyways, this does not use the Maxim toggle lock design. It's fully recoil operated, which is absolutely beautiful. And yes, we will have, like I said, future video on the Maxim gun. That actually will probably be the next video, because I love the Maxim. But I hate it how every effing gun of the period was just a Maxim clone. Everyone wanted the Maxim. But America, even though they had little interest in a machine gun before the time, adopted this bad boy. This thing weighs 47 pounds, and for that, it's a very reliable gun. Now, like I said, the U.S. did not have much interest in the machine guns. So when Browning submitted this design... In 1917, when the war was declared against Germany, there were a lot of people submitting, and the tests had to be started. So, the first test this thing went through was firing demos and firing tests. Now, through the first design, the first model he ever built for this gun, it was able to shoot off... You know, give a second. Comment down below, right now. Guess how many rounds it shot off before a malfunction. Guess. Well, before a part breaks. 39,500 rounds, almost 40,000 rounds went through this thing before the sear on it broke. Ugh. Other than that, most of the problems were just caused by belts, like small stoppages. But that was just caused because of the janky loaded belts. Now, of course, it's in 30-odd-6, which is the sexiest caliber known to man. I love the caliber so much. Um... Now, the Army, however, was concerned the production models would not be as good as the, you know, 
prototype, because usually the prototype's a bit better, or not as good in some cases. So they were kind of afraid of that. The second test was with with a second gun, a production, early production model. And it fired for 48 minutes and 12 seconds before they just cut it off, because it spent 21,000 rounds. It was almost immediately adopted as the standard heavy machine gun for the U.S. Army. Production, however, was a bit of a problem. They gave several manufacturers this one gun to produce because they needed it in numbers. Now, they had given, you know, and they were pumping these things out, okay? And when the war was over, they had all produced 42,750 of these guns. After World War One, there were several redesigns of it trying to sell it to the civilians and stuff, but... That was an interesting time in America. Couldn't buy booze, but you could buy a fully automatic gun. That's how it should be. Changed my mind. Don't kill me in the comments. Anyways, these guns were used not as much in World War I as most U.S. troops actually used French Hotchkiss guns. These were very seldom used. But they served on through World War II as the M1919 and even just the M1917. Unchanged. And some of the M1917 models... And the 1919 model served to this day, which means it's an almost, it's a design almost 120 years old, still serving with the U.S. today. And of course, in the 1930s and late 20s, Belgium was allowed to make a domestic version as well as Sweden and Poland, because everyone loves this thing, which in my opinion is actually better than a Maxim gun. Just because it's unique and has a bit better of operation, and of course what this became. It became the 1919, but then in 1921, I believe, after the standard heavy caliber was adopted, the 50 BMG! Sorry, I get excited. They made the M2 Browning, and I'm making a video on that in the future. It's pretty much this, scaled up, and then some. It shoots the 50 caliber round, which is a dedicated man stopper, but also anti-armor weapon. This And cue the awkward cut because my camera decided to absolutely die. Now, in the end, almost 30 countries ended up adopting with this thing, which is pretty impressive, especially since it was unique and wasn't just a clone of the Maxim. Now, I want to give credit to someone who actually helped me decide on this gun and showed this gun to be built. And that is the little person I know by Ero. Now... This little message to you, even though I tell you this enough. Eclipse de Shadow. Anyways. And the other thing is, speaking of views and stuff, the Pancor video still hasn't been turned out. Guess y'all don't want the Pancor. Better go hit up the uh, PPSH41 video, which should be in, like, that corner. Come on, hit it. I'll, I'll help you. I'll help you hit it, okay? Three, two, one.